What is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD Mode podcast interview. Where every single week, I interview top entrepreneurs, top real estate professionals, straight up top badass. They're out there dominating their space. These are people choosing to not live a life of mediocrity, but instead to go out there and create big, amazing, epic lives for themselves, their families, as well as have a big impact on others. And today, you guys, we've got another rock star, special guest on the show, a guest that's a good personal friend of mine. This is somebody I've looked up to my whole entire real estate career and have been uh, have had the privilege and, and just the honor to become personal friends with our guest as well. This is a guy that jumped into the real estate industry as a real estate agent over 25 years ago. First year in the business, you guys, he was a full-time, had a full-time job as a social worker and sold 40 deals in real estate his first year part-time. Then transition to full time, and the dude has just been building this monster, amazing business ever since. Last year, 2019, he and his team did uh, about $200 million in gross volume sales and about five million, just over $5 million in GCI. So, this is a dude that's been around the block, knows what the hell he's doing. Uh, he's in my own backyard, so I see his business. You know, right? I've seen it for my whole entire career. And, like I said, somebody I've been looked up to and respected. Uh, for this time and, and just excited to bring all his brilliance uh, for him to share his knowledge and how he built this epic, amazing business, how he's adapted and shifted through all different types of markets out there, what he's doing now today to shift and adapt with all the technology companies and you know the economy that, that we're getting ready to uh, potentially shift into with everything taking place here. So really stoked and honored to have my good friend, Andrew Bloom here on the podcast. Now, real quick, before we jump into the actual podcast, you guys, make sure to check out if you love these podcast if you love uh, 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 free information not just free information but if you love information if you love coaching if you love getting you know uh, uh, learning from the best of the best make sure to check out 41 tips with Joshua Smith 41 tips with Joshua Smith.com are 41 in-depth hardcore so it's 41 weekly coaching tips from myself personally um, and I spent a lot of time uh, putting these together creating these for you guys to help you explode your real estate business they're 100% free there's nothing being sold in these right just like these podcasts man it's just free content to help you continue to grow and expand your real estate business. But in every one of these 41 tips, you guys, this is stuff that I've implemented, that I've tested, that I know for a fact works, that's helped me make millions over my 15 plus year long real estate journey and real estate career. So again, 41 tips with Joshua Smith.com. All right, guys, let's jump on into the interview and get our learn on. See you there. Andrew Bloom, my good friend. What's up, my man? So stoked and honored to have you here on the podcast, brother. Joshua Smith, thank you so much, buddy. I appreciate you having me. I'm really excited to be here with you. Uh, these are challenging times for everybody, and the best way to get through these times is to be together and you know, share, share experiences and, and best practices. Yeah, and what's so cool, man, is you know, I've, I've been a huge fan of yours you know, for my whole entire career. You know, when, I, when I jumped in 15 years ago, I mean, you were top dog, continue to be top, one of the top dogs, you know, and, and, and not just our market. We're in, the, we're in the same backyard, but also throughout the whole entire nation. And, you know, so my whole entire career, I've been studying you, following you. And then over the years, you know, we became friends and, you know, just, just so excited to, to finally have the opportunity to pick your brain in an interview because you got so much knowledge to share. I mean, you've been in this game for a long time. You've, you've seen moves, shifts, market corrections, you know, right? Um, and you're a dude that's adapted very well to it. And, you know, so really excited to pick your brain on that, man. One thing I didn't know, though, um, that I was reading your bio is uh, your first year in real estate. I just wanted to kind of go through this with you because, I mean, I get through the podcast, I get listeners constantly, I mean, almost daily reaching out saying, hey, I want to get into real estate, but I have this full-time job. Um, and how do I make this pivot and this transition and, and, you know, like I can give it, you know, my, my best tips, but the best advice always comes from those that did it. The reality is I jumped in full time. I didn't navigate that. So mine's kind of theory where you were a guy that not only were you, were you had a full-time job your first year, but you sold 40 homes, dude, while having a full-time job. So, yeah. you know, with that being said, man, I mean, you know, what, what, what led you to real estate and then walk us through that first year, you know, right. For those that have that question that are kind of navigating the, the job thing, you know, I mean, how the hell did you do that? Yeah, well, sure. No, it's uh, it's it, it was really exciting for me to get into the business. I, it was uh, very fulfilling and very rewarding when I when I got my real estate license. It was very empowering. I was a social worker working for the city of Phoenix as a low income housing advocate. I worked in the Head Start program, 
which funded uh, federally funded uh, preschool program for disadvantaged low income families. And uh, I have a bachelor's degree in social work from ASU. I grew up in low income housing. I was in foster care till I was 14 and then homeless till I was 18. And um, I worked really hard to get through college and, and earned a bachelor's degree in social work. And I went right into the trenches, helping other, other people and families and children with all their basic needs, food, clothing, shelter, you know, anything that they needed, I was there for them. Uh, holiday, uh, holiday drives for toys, uh, bikes for kids, shoes, clothing, uh, medical help for parents and families and children. A part of the Head Start program, it's a requirement that all children have a physical and a dental exam. And uh, so we, you know, I pick families up and drive them to the dentist and get free services for them. And, you know, if I walked into a, you know, a low income housing community and, and there was a need, I, I was there to help fill that need. After three years of working in the trenches in low income housing, I, I felt a huge disadvantage to the landlords that were representing these properties. They were taking such advantage of the tenants. You know, they weren't having the carpets replaced every few years. They were allowing you know, drippy faucets and toilets that didn't work. And, you know, they just didn't care. So, you know, I actually went to real estate school to understand the laws. I wanted to get, I really wanted to understand the statutory requirements that the landlords had. And it was sitting through real estate school where, you know, the room's packed with people that weren't really paying attention to the, to the content. They were, they were just in there to pass the pass the exam. Everybody would talk about it. I just want to pass, how do I pass the exam? I just want to pass the test. I want to go sell real estate. That's all I want to do. And we got, you know, and, and they'd show up late to class or they leave early or they would disengage. I just kind of sensed that, you know, they weren't necessarily in it for the right reasons. I mean, they, everybody has their own reasons, but I saw what so much more value in the information that I was learning. And then as soon as I got my real estate license, I, I just became a better housing advocate. And as a result of understanding that people could buy houses for less money than they were paying rent, it was really easy for me to sell 40 homes my first year in these low income communities where I was working. My average sell price my first year was probably $60,000. And, uh, and, and that brings us to another point. I reached a point 18 months into my business where I decided to go full time that I knew, you know, staying in these low income neighborhoods, I was, I was never going to be able to hit um, higher financial goals that I had for myself, you know, and, and so I made a very conscious effort over the next, you know, 10 to 15 years to continue to increase my average sell price. And last year, you know, I sold 282 homes for $195 million in volume, uh, about 5.2 million in GCI, but it, it didn't start off that way, you know, and it's intentional, it's on purpose, it's by design, all the you know, every conversation I have, every relationship I have, every, you know, marketing piece I put out or, you know, how I structure my business is all designed to make sure that we're providing the highest level of fiduciary care to the client. We're servicing these communities at a high level. You know, as a social worker, I'd go into these neighborhoods and the kids and families would run out of their houses to thank me for the food box that they got for the week before, or thank me for the, the new clothes or shoes that, you know, Jimmy or Johnny or, Bob, you know, whoever, whoever got and um, and I felt like a mayor I felt like I was really making a difference in these communities and when I went into real estate full-time I said you know I've got to build the same connection with building as a social one that they come to anything that they need whatever it might be and that's kind of the real estate agent right we sort of get and then we get inundated with a large business and you know, plumbers electricians mover uh, anything I mean we're you know as students we're the resource for everything and it becomes overwhelming then you stop level of intimate service because the circus or the business just gets too big. You don't know how to manage it. You don't know how to leverage and you're stuck in these boxes and you're, and you struggle and you struggle for growth. And, um, you know, when embraced, uh, growth and surrounding myself with people that are, that are growth oriented. I used to watch your video make for FISBO expires and these, and they were epic. The content and where you were coming from the how to navigate through real estate coming from massive contribution and you were delivering it to every anybody in need. It was like how to step by step. This is what you need to do in order to through real estate. And you, and you were using a relation and then sharing your content with the real estate people like you that were, were givers and coming from contribution. And, you know, I, I took whatever I could and, and implemented it the best I could in order to, 
you know, provide the host. Surrounding yourself with people like yourself and, and groups like this and this, just to continue to get better, just always come. And, uh, and I've never reached a point where I do it all. And every time I reach the top of a certain mountain, it just exposed the, the, the peaks of the other mountains around it, right? So just keep climbing and keep working hard. So yeah, I, getting my start in real estate was, uh, it, I never expected, ever, ever in my life expected to uh, live in the kind of home that I live in and, and raise my kids and my, my wife home, take care of them and have the, the financial freedom that, uh, and don't get me wrong, we were sharing offline, I cut, you know, 47 grand a month out of my expenses. And we'll, you know, we'll dive into that deeper into this conversation, but always, always being able to, uh, to navigate and pivot and move through any obstacle. You know, it's just never been for me or for you, right? We both have been uh, dealt with a lot of adversity and for dealing with adversity for the first time, it can be very paralyzing. But for those of us through some challenges in life, we can embrace these and really make a difference in the community right now through our behaviors, through our communication. And, uh, and I'm just, I'm really excited to be leading through these challenging times. Yeah, man, I, I love it. That's such powerful stuff. And there, there's something, I mean, there's a lot that you just said there that was so powerful, you know, right? Um, I mean, your commitment to your clients, your commitment to your mastery, your commitment to your career. But another thing that you said, man, I just absolutely loved um, of, hey, I knew I had to increase the price point, you know, and I committed the next 10 to 15 years to doing that, you know, right? And, and you know, I know we're in the same market, so I have the, the liberty and the blessing of being able to watch you sell all these, you know, some of the most beautiful homes, highest price point homes in our marketplace, you know, right? Um, but you played the long game. You know, I have so many real estate agents that are like, man, I want to get to luxury, and they're just not willing to put in the work and play that long game like you did. And, you know, I mean, you committed to, uh, to, you know, work in the next 10 to 15 years to pull it, you know, right? Like that's the true long game and the commitment. And can you just speak to a little bit of, of that for those that are like wanting to make a big transition and shift in price point, like you did just the, the commitment that it takes and in, in the time investment that it takes to, to pull it off like you have. Well, I think, you know, I think everything in life is sequential. It, I mean, growth is sequential and, and, you know, if you, uh, the, the first thing is you have to know where you're at and who you can help benefit most. And typically the answer to that is the people you are the people that know a little bit less about real estate than you do. In the beginning, I didn't know anything about real estate and helping, you know, first time home buyers and, and uh, you know, the entry level price points, you know, I kind of understood that. But as I, as my comp, competency increased my confidence grew and as my confidence grew my conversion rates increased right so i think it's really important that you look at well what where are where are your key competencies if your key competency is in the two hundred thousand dollar or in the home that you live in right you look at the value of your good place to start i got into the business for me to sell it was pretty easy sell a million dollar house would have been complicated so you have to align your competencies uh, with the market that you're in, right? Otherwise, you get no a lot, a lot more than you than you should, right? Because the goal is to get to yes. And so when you self-evaluate your core competency, your uh, who you are, the groups you're engaged with, your sphere of influence, that that's going to be your best target. And then once you once I gained more confidence with what I was doing. I was able to elevate and increase and focus on a higher price point. And once I mastered that, I was able then to go up to a higher price. After that, I was able to elevate again. And, you know, it, it's, uh, you can go out and, and, and gain a lot of, of knowledge, information, trenches, doing the work. If, if you want to live, work in a luxury market, but you don't live in a luxury community or you don't have a sphere of influence surrounded by luxury, then you might need to, you know, step back or take it, take it down a notch and, and, and work within the market. And then your side, your side hustle has got to be learn the inventory and the products and the, and the, the finishes and the language used, uh, describe luxury homes, going on tour and houses, um, uh, previewing listings in neighborhoods that you want in, 
you know, there's a way to, to learn the business and learn uh, these types of uh, price categories um, w without compromising the things you do every day, right? So, so that's a really important people to know. It doesn't come overnight. If you jump on a team that's doing it now and get in on the ground floor and, and you know, I've got agents that, that have been with me and then they go out on their own and they're having tremendous success because they were willing to take a, an apprenticeship. You know, they're, they're willing to be on a split and take a, a little less money today for the benefit of the learning curve, right? For, hey, let's, now they've got the opportunity to, to check your ego at the door. There's no place in this industry for us to be ego. We have to be humble, we have to be hungry, and we have to be curious. And if you have those three core values uh, and, and you're focused on those things, right? Being hungry, are you, are you motivated? Are you driven? Are you self-driven? Are you getting out of bed every day to do what it takes to have the right activities and the right habits? If, if you don't have the right activities and the right habits selling selling homes at one price range, you're not going to have the habits to sell homes at another, right? So having consistent habits is important. Humble is so critical to the success in this industry because we're in a business that's transparent. People know who we are. They know what we do. They know, uh, you know, the clients talk, neighbors talk, the community talks. Uh, you, you've got to surround yourself with a community that's going to support you and help you grow. And uh, being humble is uh, an attribute or a value that you have to have in order to uh, get the love from the community that you, you want to be a part of. And then lastly, being curious, always being learning based. So are you watching the videos? Are you studying the market? Are you practicing your scripts? Are you role playing? Are you previewing properties? You know, just, you know, always come from a, from a learning based mindset. And, um, you know, if three traits, you can't help but to be successful. You know, I love what you talk about. With the guy in the gym working out, right? It's like you see this guy in the gym working out every day and you're not getting any better. You got to go up and you got to dissect that, peel the onion back. You know, you got to find out what time is he getting up in the morning? What is he eating? What kind of vitamins is he taking? What's, what are his relationships right? Like where, where's his head at? What's his mindset? Get into his head, right? Like really peel the onion back and find – you know, I, I, you and I have sat down and had lunch together. I've had a lot of agents around the country that have called me and said, hey, can I, can I pick your brain, right? They're just not watching what I'm doing. They're actually engaging me and going, hey, share with me your best practices. I mean, my growth is because I, 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 pull, I, I surround myself with other people that are doing things at a higher level. And I don't just watch from the outside with envy. You know, I engage them and I want to, hey, is there anything I can do to support you and help you? And let's you know, let's grow together, right? It's, we're in a community where people love to help each other grow. You know, they're, they, they, we share best practices. We, we share our P&Ls. We share our, our pleasures and our pain. You know, we, we, uh, we know what, that it's messy in the middle. How do we get past that? Um, you know, I've been, I'm 25 years in the business. I've been through a lot of things, ups and downs, highs and lows. And, you know, I'm willing to share any of it and all of it with anybody that, any, anybody willing to listen, right? So, you know, you, you, you just want to see people do well and get better at, at what they do and how they serve other people, right? Yeah. So that's, that's kind of been my, you know, my growth for, for 25 years. Now, I was with, uh, I, I, was, I spent 20 years where I don't feel like I was growing very much at all. Uh, my business plateaued at $40 million a year in production, my, my third year in the business, and I did $20 million a year for 20 years in a row. And, um, and I couldn't get past it because I wasn't dedicated to learning. I wasn't in the right rooms. I wasn't in the right conversations. You know, it was a real scarcity mindset. I was just like, you know, Hey, this is what I'm doing and it's working. And I, I didn't understand leverage and coaching and training and, and, and putting myself in, in the, in the right space. And, and once I, uh, once I got in the right environment, it, it all blew up. My business went from 40 million to 200 million in three and a half years because I, I opened myself up to growth, you know, and it was a, it was an exciting place to be. It's an exciting place for me to be. I enjoy it a lot. Yeah. Love it, man. So, so powerful. And it's so amazing when we're hearing it from a guy like you, that's been doing it for 25 plus years, personally sold over 1.5 billion you know, right. And then now, you know, now you're doing a couple hundred million a year and selling some of the most beautiful homes on the planet to sit there and 
be able to see the student that you are and, and the fact that you are so humble, you know, right. It's, it's such a, I guess, inspiration and a breath of fresh air to see for all of us, you know, to see the importance of that. And yeah, I love it, man. Um, you know, you're, you're throughout this, this, you know, almost three decades of a, of a career now, um, you've experienced a lot of ups and downs you talked about earlier and, you know, and, and the reason I want to bring this up, I think it's always important to bring up, but especially now during the time that we're in right now with, you know, all the panic and fear of, of the coronavirus. And, and, you know, it's just my opinion, none of us have a crystal ball, but the, the economic blowback, you know, I believe will be vastly more um, severe than the, the, you know, the virus itself, you know, what we'll experience for the next few years. And, and I'm not to sit here and say that it's that the coronavirus, you know, we were, we were, there were signs that we were already starting a recession before the coronavirus is probably just the straw that broke the camel's back, you know, right. But I mean, yeah. you're a dude that you and I both went through, you know, the, the, the great recession, you know, arguably the worst housing market crash of all time. And like, we were in the Mecca dude, <laughs> Phoenix, Arizona, right in the middle of it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and I know you've experienced, you know, uh, uh, uh you know, a, a few of these, this isn't your first rodeo with this. And, you know, I mean, can you just kind of break down, you know, the first thing I want to go into is, is the mindset that you have to get yourself through these, these transition and shifts. Cause a lot of people listen to the hype, listen to the media, they, they get worried, go into a paralyzation state. Um, and the, you know, unless you're clear amongst the chaos, you don't really know how to pivot. And, and what do you do to kind of center yourself and stay mentally strong, you know, during these shifts that allow you to adapt and change like you've been able to do, you know, throughout your 25 plus year long career? Yeah. Well, I appreciate that, Joshua. The, uh, you, you have to have an emergency plan, right? You have to, and you've got to act fast. You've got to move very, very quickly because the mistakes that I made in 2008 was thinking that the crisis was going to end sooner and my income would recover faster. And what we found was the prolonged, drawn out effects of the demise of the mortgage markets and the housing market, um, it was a financial blow to everybody because we all felt like it's going to change. It's going to change. I don't need to change. It's going to change. The difference with this crisis is I've taken the responsibility to change. I'm not waiting for the market to change. I've been saying for 25 years, this is the best real estate market we have because it's the only real estate market we have. There's not another real estate market. So I have to change. I can't wait for the market to change. So, you know, putting the oxygen mask on yourself first is something we hear all the time. But until you're in that situation, you really have to understand why that's so important. And what does that mean? What does it look like to put the oxygen mask on yourself first, to put yourself in a position where you can survive to help others? Because if you cannot survive to help others, then, then you're going to go down with the ship. And, and so what does that look like? You have to expect in this environment right now, and I'm not sure when we're hearing this, but you got to expect that you're not going to have any income from sales of real estate for 90 days from today. You have to expect that. You just have to know that, you know what, maybe I'll get a check. Maybe I'll have a closing. But the reality is you have to assume zero. You have to. You ha if you don't assume zero, the 90 days turns into 12 months, right? Because by the time you, you course correct, you've over, it's too far to come, to come from behind. So you've got to take, whoop, are you there? Yep. You've got to take immediate action, immediate action right now in your life and in your business, in your personal expenses, in your business expenses, you have to slash them. There's not any room to sit around and wait. It's got to be immediate. It's got to be at, you know, if, if we think about the, uh, boy, I'm, I'm going to just plug this thing in. If we think about the, the loss of life we had in California when that, when that ship caught on fire, the only survivors were the crew that jumped overboard. Everybody else was asleep down below the deck, right? Well, you cannot afford to be asleep below the deck right now. You have to be able to jump out of the boat and get into the lifeboat. Well, what does the lifeboat mean? It's capital preservation. You have to, you have to preserve every single thing that you can so that you can last through this market. 
we hear people talk about thriving through this market. Thriving through the market's not the goal. You have to survive the next 90 days so that you can thrive into the future, right? It's thrive to survive or survive to thrive. You've got to survive to thrive. If there's no, if you're not, if you're not surviving, you're, there's never going to be a thrive. So you've, you've got to cut every expense off your P&L, out of your budget that is unnecessary for you to be able to exist. And if you don't cut those expenses for you to exist, you're not going to exist long. You know, this is an industry, we're, we're actually globally, I mean, particularly in the United States, most people live month to month. They don't have enough liquid savings or reserves to go 90 days or 120 days without income. And so, you know, that was the very first thing I did. And that, and that was last Friday. I sat down with my leadership team. We went through the P&L. I knocked out 47 grand a month which is about 40% of my monthly overhead, about 40% of my monthly overhead in one day, knocked it out, done. Then I sent letters to all my other vendors that I have a relationship with and said, look, we need to either reduce or suspend our agreement. We need to reduce or suspend our agreement. Maybe it's for 30 days, maybe it's for 90 days, but I, I want to have a relationship with you. I've had some of these people come back to me and said, Andrew, you've been, we've had a relationship for 20 years. We're all going through this. For the next 90 days, I'm going to continue to service you at the same level as much as I can. And, and then we'll just pick up, the, we'll pick up the pieces down the road, right? But for some of them, I just cut them out completely. And so if you're running a small business, not everybody's running a business the size of mine. If you're running a small business, where do you cut out? Your office expenses, your cable television. You know, there's a lot of things that you can, you just got to go through it and go, is this in this, if the world all falls apart today and I'm not going to have income for another three or four or five months relative to the income I have now. I mean, take what you take your income from 2019 and cut it in half and go, okay, if, or cut it, cut it down by 75%. Say, okay, if this is going to be my income in 2020, what do I need in order to, to make that happen? Right? Because we have, this is, there's going to be about $8 trillion in economic loss as a result of the coronavirus. And a stimulate, stimulant package of a, of a trillion dollars or $2 trillion is only going to be 15 to 20% of the economic loss. Well, where does that 80%, it doesn't get made up. It's just gone. So we have to be extremely proactive. We have to turn our attention to the communities that we live in and that we serve and provide value and be a, you know, be a first responder. We have to be a, a first responder in these communities, right? So that when everybody, when things get back to the new normal, they know that we were there for them in the tough times and in the good times. And that's really important. You know, it's, it's just not a time. It's not a time to wait. I waited in 08. I, wait, I waited. I was writing checks every month, that, you know, just draining my accounts, draining them every month, thinking like most homeowners. You know, in the beginning of the short sale crisis, we couldn't convince people to stop making mortgage payments as much as we tried. Don't feed the alligator or the alligator is going to eat you. And I would tell that to people over and over and over again. You know, I'm in the middle of a short sale right now where the, where the seller hasn't made a, a payment in a year. We're just getting ready for approval. Now it looks like he might be able to, this guy is a, he works at AJ's, which is one of our supermarkets. And every time I walk in there, he hugs me. Andrew, you've saved my life. I don't know where I'd have been the last year if I didn't listen to your advice. Realtors always have this, you know, I can't give financial advice and I can't give tax advice. And as much as that's true, you can still share your experiences with people. This is the experience that I've had. These are the experiences that I've had. I advise you to seek, go talk to your CPA and go talk to your attorney. And this is, these are the things, these are the questions you should be asking them, right? We are, we are the resource for our community and, and to get through this market. You know, I, I just, I mean, I, I've never had a bad day in the real estate business. I've, I've, I've never had a bad market. We've had changes in the market, but my activities, my actions, my behaviors, and my habits 
have allowed me to have a, a consistent real estate business for 25 years. Yeah. And when you talk about immediate action, man, I mean, the day that the president came out and kind of shut everything down, or at least the recommendation of the, the quarantine and the shutdown, that's the day that you're slashing expenses. I did last Friday, man. I was, I mean, that, that's his, you know, I mean, I, I, okay. I'm G, you know, GSD mode here, but it's like, you know, this weekend is my planning session for that. You know, right. Like that. I mean, that just shows that the speed that you operate by instead of waiting, like most that'll probably wait for, like you've mentioned several months, you know, right. And exhaust their savings. Now, one question I do have for you in that, um, you know, cause it, the thing that I've always personally struggled with, you know, when it, like with my P and L man, it's, I'll go at it with a, like a surgeon with the, with the scalp, you know, the scalpel with, if it's not making me money or, 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 so I can't track an ROI to it and the ROI is not right. Or if it's not saving me time, what AKA I can make more money. Um, or like, you know, I, I never really pulled the, the self development spend because that allows me to continue to, to move forward through these times. But the thing that I've always had a difficult time with, because and I, I mean, it's to me, it's the hardest thing in, in entrepreneurship and in business is letting go of people, you know, right? Um, how do you start making those decisions and evaluating your staff if now is the time or, or whenever that time comes? Maybe you haven't got to that point yet, but you know, if that time comes, I mean, you know, how, how do you how do you operate with speed and proactivity? Because for me, that's the area that I've been the guy that's waited too long, and and you know. Yeah, it's very difficult to uh, staff is is important, right? That's your your leadership team is really really critical. Uh, keeping the momentum, keeping the positivity up, um, getting them into activity. I think if you look at leveraging uh, them so that you can come out of this on top, that's really important. You know, I made a decision the end of December. I went to my leadership team and said, I'm not giving anybody raises in 2020. I'm going to, I'm going to take over your healthcare expenses for the whole team. It's $8,000 a month. Uh, and I looked at it and I said, okay, it's going to cost me a hundred thousand dollars a year, or I could give everybody raises. And, um, I, I tell you, I, I'm so glad that I'm protecting the people that I care about, yeah. you know, their healthcare. You know, I've got, I have a, uh, one of my leaders on my team's married with three kids and had no insurance, couldn't afford it. It's almost $2,000 a month or $1,800 a month. I'm taking care of it. You know, that was a decision I made in December. And, you know, if we've got to get lean and, and cut salaries or, or restructure certain things where they're getting a, a base salary and a percentage of the gross or a percentage of the net. So we're all in it together. You know, I'm encouraging my team to go through, cut their expenses, cut their personal expenses, right? Cut it in half, cut it down. Uh, let's all get lean and mean. Let's all get in this together so that we can, we can go as long as we can. You know, I was watching Mark Cuban last night on television and, you know, all the, all the workers and all the arenas that he's, he's involved in, he's still paying all their, they're, they're still getting paid. Well, I'm not Mark Cuban. Most of us aren't Mark Cuban. Uh, he owns 150 businesses. He's, you know, God bless him. He can afford to do that. But I think being transparent, being honest with your team is so important. Being honest with your family. You know, my kids are freaking out. I mean, they're all 20 to 25. They're, they're like, dad's freaking out. Like it's the end of the world. Well, guess what? We better plan for it to be the end of the world so that, so that we can still be here when the lights come back on. You better plan for that. You know, we've got people that are, that are sick, that are dying, that are losing their homes. They're going to lose their jobs. Waiters and waitresses that can't pay their rent landlords who are going to, you know, you got the government stepping in and saying, Hey, no foreclosures, no evictions. Well, at some point, somebody's going to pay the price for that, right? Is Fannie and Freddie really going to waive mortgage payments for 12 months that we're seeing right now today on the news? Um, control what you can control, right? Don't expect bailout. Don't expect somebody to bail you out of this. Take responsibility for your P&L, your expenses, and the people around you and take immediate, immediate action right now as much as you can. You can always add things back on as things improve. But right now you have to survive in order to thrive. And if you don't survive and you don't put the oxygen mask on yourself first, you're not going to be able to save the other passengers that are on the bus with you. Yeah, love it, man. And, you know, I don't know if you've experienced this through your career, but man, I've, 
It's like, if I could have just kept doing the best practices and operating in the same way that I did to create the success, then once I earned it and got comfortable, you know, right. It kind of goes in these ebb and flows, man, where, I mean, this is all the shit. If, if we were just so intentional with our entrepreneurship and, and like, this is all, this, this is just smart business, even not amongst these times. Well, it goes from being entrepreneurial to being purposeful and, and really having a plan and getting into action. You know, it's, it, it, it's just really important. This is why for how many years, Joshua, have you been talking about building a moat around your database, protecting your database, right? You've done a great, I mean, just a phenomenal job continuing to do that and push that message out there. And these are the times when we look at it and go, have we built a moat around our database? And if we haven't, there's never been a better time to reach out to people and check in and say, Hey, how are you? Is there anything I can do for you? I'm, I'm, I'm here. If there's anything that you need and come from contribution all the time. And, and, you know, that's what I love about you, brother. You know what you've been, you've been pouring into other people forever. And uh, you know, when you pour in other people, it comes back tenfold, you know, not just financially. I mean, it's spiritually and emotionally. You just grow as a leader, as a human being, it, it, it's never a better time to, you know, take out the toolbox and start sharpening the iron, right? And iron sharpens iron. We work together and, you know, we'll get, we'll get, we're not just going to get through this. We're going to thrive. We're going to, you know, we've been seeing the transition from the individual soul agent to the team model for a long time. Now we know why it's so important to build leverage and infrastructure in your organization. And then as a leader, we have some other responsibilities to, to lead this team. And now I've got 40 people that I'm responsible for their, you know, emotional well-being and their financial well-being, right? So uh, for me as a leader, I've got to make sure that I'm tuned in and tapped into all of the available resources I can to, to, to lead this battleship through this storm. And I, I feel... I, I, you know, I'll take that. I'll take that responsibility. I'm, I'm prepared for it. Yep. Yep. hundred percent. Love it, man. Powerful stuff, dude. And then, all right. So, so we've talked a lot about what to do in the immediate kind of to bring into that survival mode. Then, you know, in order to not just survive, thrive, like we've got to adapt, reinvent ourselves, meet the consumer's needs. You know, what are some things that, that either that you're already doing now or that you've done in the past to allow you to kind of reinvent yourself to adapt through that changing market? Well, I think positioning yourself in the community is really important, right? And, and there's never been a, a better time to come together and build community. And so, you know, that's how I got started in the business. That's how I built my business. That's how I grew and sustained my business was just being a, an advocate in the community. And I think that's, you know, that's never been more important, being a resource. But you have to monetize your activities and your behaviors at the same time, right? If you're, if you're just serving others and you're not, you know, you can go, you can go down to uh, a homeless shelter and drop off supplies and it's a wonderful thing to do, but how do you monetize those activities? Well, it's real simple. You go into your Facebook and you let them know that you're going to be going down to the, the shelter or you're going down to the food bank and you're going to be going on Friday at two o'clock. And if anybody wants to drop off supplies at your office or at a drop off location or at their front door, you'll come by and pick those things up and deliver it. And then you'll, you know, photograph the experience and send it to them. Hey, today we made a difference. And this is, it, you know, it sounds a little self-serving, but you have to monetize your behavior. At the same time, we have to think about that. Every activity and every behavior we have to think about how is this going to benefit me financially so that I can benefit other people? Because money's only good for the good that money can do, right? So the, it's not self-serving. It's that if I'm able to pay my bills because I'm monetizing my activities, then I'm able to allow my team to go out and do the activities. So we have to get off of the soapbox that, you know, that's, that it's showboaty or, you know, it's self, self-fulfilling to 
post a Facebook live video at St. Mary's Food Bank and the shelves are empty. That's not self-serving. Come from contribution, understand that it takes a village in order for all of us to succeed and to survive. It takes a village and communicate what you're doing and your messaging. You can't be arrogant and, you, you know, you have to be real, right? We just have to be real that we're human beings that, that all have basic needs of food, clothing, and shelter. Those three things are never going to change. And so it's so impactful to think about we're in an industry where it's a requirement for people to have shelter. And it's our responsibility to make sure that they've got the kind of shelter that they want to have, right? How can we, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It never did for me, right? It's like, if, if this is where you choose to live, how can we make the environment as healthy as possible so that you can be as successful as you can be in your life, right? Well, are you with me, Josh? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, you know, those are the things that are, that are really important, right? As, I mean, I, I feel like I'm a social worker and I've always been a social worker. So I've got that mindset that I'm going to build community. I'm going to help community. I'm going to be an advocate for, you know, the, the basic needs in life and to help people grow and be the best that they can be. And, and, and when you have that mindset and that attitude, then you can accomplish a lot of tremendous, really great things, but you've got to put the oxygen mask on yourself first. You've got to feed your soul. You've got to feed your family or you're not going to be able to help other people. You know, and, and what are the day-to-day -day activities that you can do today? I was out showing a house today that was, uh, I, I brought, I brought my, it's on Facebook Live. I went on Facebook Live to show the house and I, and, and several people that are in the community that are influential commented on my Facebook Live and they're like, you know, thank you for doing what you're doing, right? We're, we're showing that life goes on. People want to see that life goes on. People are, people have to move. They've sold their homes. They've got to move. They're relocating here. The, the, the house I showed today was for a physician relocating from Houston to Scottsdale. They're coming. They're, they're going to be here. You know, they're, uh, they've already sold their house in Texas. So they're going to move. People are going to move. Uh, people are going to need to sell. And they're going to need sound advice more so than ever over the next 6 to 12 to 18 months. They're going to need us to be able to answer difficult questions and help navigate and guide through that. And I've succeeded in this business because, you know, I, I've had a tremendous amount of experience and I've, and I, I let that experience go to work for me. You know, it's a, if you're on your own, if you're an agent on your own, this is a, this is just a, a great time to team up with people in your market that are performing at a high level where you're willing to work for a little bit less so that everybody can make a little bit more. You know, it's a, uh, these are these are important times for all of us to work together yeah it's such powerful stuff dude and I, I love that you you go in so deep in this stuff and the community and you know start off as a social worker still a social worker always you know have been and will be a social worker and you know because you know being in the same markets you know like you're the neighborhoods and the communities that that you work i mean i've literally driven down streets where i don't see any signs but yours i mean you have as much market share in your areas as any agent i've ever seen so most agents would start reverse engineering your marketing, you know, right? And, and yeah, your marketing's on point. It's great marketing, but this is the piece that people aren't seeing. You know, they, they just want to stick the piece in the mailbox or do the Facebook ad. They're not as passionate and, and really that obsession that you have of being the advocate in the community and such powerful stuff, bro. Thank you. Yep. Love it, dude. So then, um, uh, you know, for those that are like in the, the, just kind of the immediate, you know, you talked about doing the showing with through, through Facebook live, you know, so it sounds like you're doing virtual showings to accommodate, um, um, your clientele, which I know a lot of top producers that I've been talking to through this are doing like virtual open houses, doing, you know, zoom listing presentations, buyer presentation, you know, certain things to kind of, uh, 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 make the, our clients more comfortable, if you will, with, I guess the susceptibility to the virus. Um, but man, I love hearing you have about how you would leverage that on social media. You know, speaking of that, you know, what are some things that you're telling your team or recommendations that you could give us? I know you've already given us some great ideas with this, but of 
leveraging it in such a way of, cause you said that like people want to see that the world's still moving, which I think is really important, you know, right? Well, everybody's stuck at home. They want to see that moving forward. So what are, what are some kind of tactful ways that we can do that, you know, right? Um, with not looking like a douche on the internet, you know, right? Well, exactly. I mean, I think, it, I, I think being your authentic self is important, right? I mean, being authentic and, and being transparent and coming from contribution, these things are, you know, people, don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, right? We've heard that over and over again. And, and there's just so much truth behind it. So when, you, when, you're, when you're launching these initiatives, like a, a food drive in your neighborhood, and you're, and you're on Nextdoor or Facebook, you're saying, hey, look, if you, if you leave these items outside your door, I'll come by and pick them up. I'm going to be walking the neighborhood with my kids or, you know, or with my team. Uh, have these items out uh, you know you can you can drop a letter in the mail I think it's very important that most of your activities today are highly leveraged based on um, uh, leveraging your time not leveraging your money right using your intellectual property rather than your financial capital you know convert your activities convert what you're doing from leveraging financially to leveraging human capital human capital is available People can get a lot of work done from home. High school kids, college kids can all jump onto Facebook and say, hey, I'm home from school. I grew up in this neighborhood. We're doing a food drive. Help, help us do that. Who wants, to, who wants to show support? I mean, we're on Zoom calls all day today identifying the communities in which we're going to go after to share and spread these messages, right? Be very specific, like, okay, I'm going to go into DC Ranch or whatever neighborhood it is. And I, these are the three or four tactics I'm going to use to communicate with the community. I'm going to call the Homeowners Association office. I'm going to say, look, we're going to do a food drive or a water drive or a whatever it might be. And, and we want to get you behind it as the Homeowners Association or the, or the way to communicate out to the community or we're going to send a postcard or a letter or a Facebook or an email. You know, we all have the access and the ability to get the data, right? We all know now phone numbers and emails for everybody in the world, right? It's like it's out there, whether you're using coal or total farm or whatever resource you're using, we now have databases. So segment those databases by community, hyper local is still the way to reach the people in the community by doing the right activities, you're going to stay engaged. You're going to stay proactive. When, they're, when these people are, are ready for information, they're going to be more readily available or, or have a desire to get the information from you because you, you're, you're always coming from a place of contribution. People want to connect. It's the same reason I'm here with you today, Josh, for 15 years. I've just been watching you pour into the real estate community, helping to make everybody better throwing out free content left and right. Well, you know, and then, and then at times like this, who wants to respond to spending time with you? Well, it's other people that share those same values. So it's the same thing. You know, th this is the time when you get into your community and you, and you contribute, whether it's church, whether it's the school that, that's out of session and now you're, you know, how do you, how do you rally that community and bring them together? You know, it, it, uh, it's not any different than, 30 years ago as a social worker for the city of Phoenix, you know, uh, packing emergency food boxes and getting utility assistance and being a resource. And you know, it's the same thing we need to do today. And, and monetizing it is simply by, by, by putting it out there and drawing, drawing a crowd to what you're doing because you're passionate and you believe in it, right? That you're gonna get, you're gonna get people to jump on that bandwagon. Right? They want to contribute, they want to help, but they don't know what to do. And I tell you, there's plenty of need right here in our own communities. We don't need to go outside of our borders in order to make a difference in the world. Right? We could do it right here in our backyard. And I just compel people to look right inside their neighborhoods. Right? Write a statement about who you are. You know, where do you live? Where do you go to church? Where do you shop? What do you do? And then how do you build a circle or a geofence around that community so that you can stay relevant and present in their lives. Yeah. Love it. Dude. Such powerful stuff, man. And, you know, I know we're going long on time here. So just a couple last questions for you. 
but for you personally, man, cause you're a guy that, you know, you, you, you've been doing this now for some time, man. Um, but you have such a great attitude about life, about business, about, you know, it's always the, the greatest real estate market is the market, you know, that, that we're the in. The only market we have, it's the best market we have. Yeah. Right? You know, right. And, and, but also man, and, and knowing you, you know, right. Um, on a personal level, I mean, you're always extremely positive, you know, right. Um, great, you know, great shape mentally and physically and, you know, close with your family and all of those things, dude. I mean, do you have, you know, kind of like a, a daily ritual or something that you go through to, to you know, cause I know it's people might see and just like, Oh, he's wired that way. No, I mean, usually people have an intentional practice of some sort that, you know, they go through, um, you know, to allow them to operate in that, that great state. And, and just curious, man, if you have some kind of, whether daily, weekly, you know, rituals that you kind of follow to, you know, help you stay in this great, you know, physical and mental, you know, shape that you're in. Absolutely. Well, daily gratitude and affirmations. So my daily affirmation is this. My name is Andrew Bloom and I am bold. I'm a loving husband. I'm a great dad and I'm a successful real estate professional. I am energetic, honest, and disciplined. I treat people with respect and compassion. I'm healthy, I'm happy, and I am generous. I will commit each day to doing my personal best and to bring passion and integrity to each of my relationships. I have gratitude for all people and things around me. I am the best at what I do, and each day I look for ways to improve who I am so I can benefit others. My success is not an accident. My actions are intentional, and my relationships are real. I'm Andrew Bloom, and I am number one. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it, man. You've got to manifest the positivity. You've got to, you've got to you know, I'm a, I'm a big part of the Tree of Life movement. Man, and the intention stick, Scott Berger and... You know, if, if you're not manifesting your intentions every single day with every single activity and every single relationship and, and doing it with grace, you know, you're going you're gonna to survive and you're not going to thrive in any market. It doesn't matter what market you're in. You could have the, it doesn't matter. You know, what are your intentions? What are you on purpose about? I get up at four o'clock in the morning. I'm at Orange Theory at 5 a.m. I'm figuring out my alternatives because my orange theory is closed, but I'm at orange theory at 5 a.m. I'm in the office by eight and the two hours that I have from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. To, to get in the shower, get dressed, listen to podcasts, listen to webinars, jump on zoom calls. You know, I'm scrambling to get to the office by eight o'clock and I'm up at four o'clock in the morning and I'm thinking, what the heck, you know, I'm working my butt off. I mean, I, I work my tail off every single day to get in the office by eight and I'm running and gunning and I'm on, I'm on my phone in my closet, put my pants on and while I'm, you know, yeah, I'm obsessed, right? Be obsessed, be a maniac on a mission. You want people to look at you. You know, a lot of people looked at me and go, this guy's, that guy's whacked, man. He's crazy. He says, you know, we've been friends for years and he says no to me all the time. You, you gotta be able to, Structure your time so that you've got enough energy to get you through the day and get to bed at eight o'clock in the evening. Get up back up at 4 a.m. and do it again. You know, I, just, I, I still do open houses. People come into my open house. They're like, what are you doing open houses for? Are you serious? Like, really? You've been, I, I can't believe you're here. I love it. I'm, I'm obsessed with the business. I love the activities. I've always loved the activities. Yeah. Such powerful stuff, dude. Um, love it, man. And those that are, that are, that are listening to this, cause I know there's a big percentage of, of, you know, our, our, uh, podcast listeners that listen on audio when Andrew went through his affirmations or, or, you know, it sounded like almost like a personal oath, you know, right. Um, just so you guys know that wasn't, he, he's not reading anything like that. That, that was all off the cuff. Boom, right there. And that only happens from daily, you know, daily repetition of, of repeating that man. So um, well, yeah, it's your muscle memory, right? I mean, you're, you're, we all know that the, your, your thoughts become your behavior, become your actions, right? All the, the whole cycle and what you're putting in is what's coming out, you know, garbage in, garbage out, right? You know, I'm, it's GSD, right? We just got to do the work. Yep, 100%, brother. All right, last question for you, dude. So now that you've been doing this for, for 25 years, if the Andrew today could go back to – you know, the Andrew 25 years ago when you were first entering this business and give yourself two pieces of advice that if you would have just vastly fast forward this success trajectory and all the success that you created, knowing everything you know now today, what would those two pieces of advice be? I think readers are leaders. 
you know, learn how to read, right? I'm learning how to read. I'm learning how to audio book and read a book at the same time because that's how I need to learn. Understand that. Really evaluate your core competencies right now to, to evaluate which market you're going to succeed in at a high level, right? So that you could plug right in and go. And the compound effect of your activities is exponential, right? So the consistency, the habits, the behaviors, you know, I'm, I, I, I'm big into geographical farming because I, the compound effect of those touches of the relationship, treating your not Mets database like a Mets data. You know, I hear from a lot of people that get into the business day one, 25 years ago, you know, I didn't have a big Mets database, but I treated my not Mets database as if they were a Mets database. In other words, the amount of contact that I had with people I didn't know over and over, I wasn't, all, I wasn't looking for a thousand new people. I was looking for any new person I could meet. I would then throw into my database so that I had an ongoing relationship or conversation with them. Right. And, and so that compound effect of our activities, our behaviors and our relationships, really important. And then the, and, and then I think one of the other things that nobody ever told me or taught me at all was you're only going to grow to the extent that you do. Right. And you're only going to attract people to your world based on the level of growth that you're willing to go through, you know, and your activities, your behavior, your, your ethics, your moral conduct, you know, it, it may not get, it may not be relevant for you when you're 22 or 23 or 25 years old, but as you're growing and as you're increasing your, uh, you know, the business that you want to attract and the relationships you want to attract, you have to think and act like a CEO, right? You, and so, you know, we tend not to understand that until either it's too late or, you know, we, uh, or, or we've just, you know, flown below the radar. So treat your, your, your personal integrity and your brand as if it was non-negotiable, right? Say no way more often than you say yes to just about everything in your life. And you'll, you'll get, you get to be much more successful, uh, much faster and for a much longer period of time. Yeah. Love it. Such powerful stuff, man. And Andrew, for those that are watching and listening, dude, if they want to, follow you get in touch with you maybe they have a referral for for your area here in, in scott's or the phoenix metro area uh, maybe they're you know we have a huge listener base that's here in the valley and you talk a lot about joining a team maybe they're interested in talking about joining your team whatever that may be man what where are the best places sure. you're going to follow you to get in touch with you and check out all the amazing things that you're doing yeah I mean, just Google Andrew Bloom but you know my cell phone is 602-989-1287 my email address is andrew at bvoluxury.com. That's andrew at bravo, victor, oscar, luxury.com. Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, GSD, where you can find me, you know. Uh, and I'm here to, to share, you, you know, any, anything with you guys, whether, whether it's, you know, growing a team or starting out in the business or you how to cut expenses or where to cut expenses or where to put your money or where to put your time, you know, I'd, uh, I'd be happy to help anybody. Yeah. Awesome, man. And those watching, listening to make it super easy on you guys. If you just scroll below, all Andrew's information will be right down below. So you can just click on those, boom, have them get to go. And Andrew, I know how busy you are, man. And it's such an honor having you on here and truly appreciate you taking time. I busy to be here. Yeah. It's been a lot of fun, my friend. Thank you, Josh. I love you, my brother. Yeah, love you too, my friend. And you guys watching, listen, thank you so much again for all your support, and we'll see you next time. Peace.